What's up everyone, I'm Arfaz and this is probably going to be a long ass video. So not only do I have a build for you today, but I also want to go a little bit more in depth about it, talking about the what's and the why we're going to be doing the things we're going to be doing on the build, and also about it, the build's goals and the fantasy behind it. So it all started on my previous video about the Theorem and Faction Arcane, and it happens that Necros benefits quite well from it, its shadows from his fort ability, Shadows of the Dead, are going to be receiving up to 360% damage increase if you get the maximum stacks of the Arcane. So, I there was also a comment on the video asking if the Arcane would be actually something valuable to have on your build or if it would be viable and stuff. And I personally personally was never a Necros player. Back in the day, Desecrate was just terrible. Being on a mission and just pressing three until everyone gets bored and get out was not fun for me. And after they changed it, I never really had any big incentive to get on building a Necros. So I actually took a... A challenge for myself because I know there's potential on Necros and we gotta be honest that when you're dealing with high-level survival missions if you don't have like an insane kill per second rate or something like that you're gonna be needing some extra drops like being from Necros Desecrate or even Atlas Zorgaze Pilfering Strangle Dome from the Augment for Korra, or even Pilfering Swarm for Hydroid. So there's that. That is another reason why I've chosen to, to make this, so we can actually try some new stuff. And thinking about undead minions that hit hard, the thing that came to my mind was, and it's the fantasy of the build, is actually the Army of the Dead, which is a skill from Death Knights from World of Warcraft. In case you have no idea what I'm talking about, the Death Knight class has an ability which is called Army of the Dead, and they, it's a big CD, has like a few minutes that you need to wait to cast again, where he will summon like a lot of ghouls all around him, and they will attack your target, and they hit hard, or they used to at least. So. And it's pretty much the idea, the idea and the, the fantasy. So the goal is get the Desecrate going, be able to do survivals with no much problem, being able to survive and the survivor going to be using the Augment Shield of Shadows and getting the damage, also keeping our shadows alive and getting their damage up. That is pretty much what we want. And we also are going to be taking this to a higher level, being turning the build able to go on steel path and doing quite a lot of stuff. So this was the first version of the build. It was what I could come up with at the start. Already have a few more versions of it, but I want to address the skill situation first, so let's start with Soul Punch. It's usually the skill I replace, because I think it's very situational. The skill by itself, it will hit the first enemy, transform it into a projectile, it's gonna take everything on its path, but if you have managed to hit a enemy with 25 or less percent health with the ability, it's gonna be one shot and that's gonna make transform that target into a shadow. If you're already kept at shadows, that is if you already have seven, it's gonna heal them. And when you're kind of far into the missions, it's gonna be harder to kind of time it right. So that's why I usually replace the skill. Terrify is a good ability. When things get ugly, it's 
fairly good to use. Let's say I'm going to put a fear on the, the enemies, they're going to be running away and their armor is going to be reduced, so if you have a really tough enemy, it's going to help you kill him. Of course, if he has armor, desecrate. So we're going to be keeping this skill active all the time. This is our main health pickups, energy pickups, ammo and everything generator. We're going to be using the spoil, so we are not going to be spending our energy to desecrate bodies. We're going to be using our health. And I can already, already tie this to Vitality or Umber Vitality. That's going to increase our health pool. And yeah, Desecrate is going to be active all the time. Then we get to Shadows of the Dead. This is what pretty much the whole build surrounds. And we're, we want a decent amount of sparse strength so we can get the... Shield of Shadows, which is the augment we're using to keep ourselves alive, which is going to give us damage reduction. Having this amount of power strength will make so that we get 12% damage reduction for each shadow that is going to be capped out at 90%. And yes, so the skill doesn't really have a duration. But the way duration affects the skill is by changing the amount of the health decay per second. So at base it's going to be 3% and you can decrease this amount by increasing your duration. So if you have a little bit more duration, the health decay per second will decrease. By base 3% health decay per second is going to give you around 33.3 seconds of your shadows. So for the power strength I'm using Blind Rage and Power Drift. Health conversion is gonna give us a good amount of damage reduction because it's gonna be increasing our armor so it's a damage reduction to our health and we're gonna have it up pretty much at all the times at 3 stacks which is the maximum. Because we're going to be collecting health orbs all the time. Equilibrium. You're going to be picking up health orbs all the time. So you're going to be getting health, energy. And when you get energy, you're going to be getting health. Adaptation. I would say that this is a the overkill of these, the first build. Because I wasn't really getting one-shotted or anything like that. So if I would replace one mod on this first build, it would be this one. And I'm using Streamline just to balance the Blind Rage a little bit, but our efficiency is still negative. And what else? Aura, I'm using Corrosive Projection. Why not something like... Rejuvenation, let's say, to heal our our dudes. The thing is, you might think like, well, you can reduce the decay by healing your shadow, of course. If you can just heal your shadow enough, you can pretty much keep your shadows of the dead for an inf infinite amount of time. But three health per second it's not gonna make any difference when your shadow has something like 40k hp you know <laughs> it's like a fart on his health let's take a butcher a corrupted butcher a corrupted butcher on level 180 is gonna have around 14k hp so you get 14k HP times 3.4, that is going to be his health. 3 health per second is going to do nothing. We could also try other stuff like energy siphon, maybe growing power. Um, I don't know, you just got to be creative. As this is Warframe, I'm using this, but you're going to have to use what you have or what you want. 
that's how the game works. So the thing I have did first, I replaced it so punch for Garuda's what is it called? The Blood Altar. Yeah. That's how it was working. Just like this. Yes. And Arcane's Theorem Infection, which is very much the thing we need to increase our damage from our our shadows. There is another build to increase our shadows damage even further, but I in pretty much all the builds I'm using this arcane. And arcane energize as our efficiency is negative and we're gonna be using quite a lot of energy. So it is good to have. The thing is at some point we're gonna be getting really hard enemies so we're gonna try to combine as much stuff as we can to increase our minions damage that's gonna be the theorem of infection later I have another build that I've tried the rhinos roar which does increase their damage and also it is great to use the panzer Volpophila which is going to be proccing viral on everyone so that is also a big damage increase for your shadows now that I'm already on the cat uh, Synth Fiber and Synth Deconstruct will really help Synth Deconstruct is going to make so every enemy injured by your companion has a chance to drop a health orb so more health orbs that is great that is amazing everything else just for survival and some utility martyr's symbiosis might save us from dying the evolution is gonna make your vopophila unkillable when he dies it's gonna become the that warm stuff around you then after a few seconds it's gonna be back on his feet fetch for our pretty much our vacuum Hunter Recovery for Lifesteal Link. I have no idea if this is even a good build for your companion, but yeah. Keep these three, maybe this one and this one, and you're, you'll be good. Again, this is Warframe. Just use what you want. You don't need to use stuff exactly as I'm using. So, let me show you what we can do. The thing I was using for a parameter was actually butchers. As with corrupted heavy gunners, we're gonna it's not gonna have that not gonna be that easy to kill them and to have our things going on, but when you're gonna be on your mission during the mission you're gonna have many types of enemies. But yeah, let's just see what we can do here. It's not gonna be much. Because these guys have a ton of armor. Of course, with our OP and reliable Glade Prime, we're gonna be deleting stuff. But then we're gonna summon our shadows. Here they are. As I said, we're gonna have around 33 seconds of them being up. And what we want is just this. See the Theorem Infection there is going up. That means their damage is increasing but they are shooting multiple different targets and they are also receiving the, the bonus electricity from our uh, shock, residual shock. The best thing here is to keep attacking, keep killing the dudes with your kit gun so we can get the, the arcane going. Oh, I've lost all of them. <laughs> Haven't even haven't really noticed. Yeah, they're doing decent damage. Alright, this is the first build. I actually, using this, I was able to survive a few more minutes, something like 65 or something like that minutes on a steel path survival and I was using 
a sentinel, not even the cat. If I had the cat, the results would have been better. But let's go into the next build. I'm going to put this back here. I'm going to show you the second version of the, the build. Here, what I have done is to actually... I have changed the umbral vitality for intensify and removed the the blind rage when we transient fortitude to get up to that to 14% our strength and normal vitality health conversion and primate continuity with just this amount of extra duration we are able to get our health decay to 2% per second and by reducing our health decay instead of having 33 seconds of our shadows alive at least now we have 50 seconds that is quite a good increase on the time and also a little bit more efficiency because we're not using our blind rage so yeah it's gonna be costing 25 less energy all of our skills oh and i forgot to show you what the blood altar was doing what a bop the only thing that's changing from that build to this one is the a little bit more duration and reduced um, cost on our skills so we're probably gonna get similar results. The thing that Blood Altar is gonna be doing is healing our shadows, so as long as we keep their health up, we're gonna have like no problem with being recasting the, the skill all the time, and we're not gonna have to or worry on losing our big stacks of the damage reduction. One thing that is yeah, yeah, it's also kind of hard to demonstrate here because we're dealing with ranged enemies or enemies using weapons, so they're gonna be stepping out of the circle and not getting healed. As you can see, the ones inside are getting healed, so that is a 9% damage reduction as long as they're kind of close by. Damage is increasing because of the viral and oh. The, the arcane just fell off again to heal them full we can just recast yeah so this with this you're already able to do quite some stuff again you gotta use what you want or what you have and yeah we might be getting the stealth multipliers and stuff but this is just a test to show what you you're able to get with this. I've said I've replaced the soap punch for blood altar and we can actually pick either blood altar, gloom or even pull of life if I'm not wrong. So gloom if you have no problem with energy management management you might want to use gloom because it's just more you don't have to be recasting all the time just have to keep that energy up so that's up to you and i left arcane strike here because i was actually going to show you that your shadows can proc your arcanes on hit arcanes are easier to proc they can also proc the ones with critical, but I would say that it, it's, it's easier to proc the unhit ones. And they can also proc the headshot ones, depending on your luck, if they manage to get a headshot or even headshot kills and stuff. But yeah, the easiest ones are probably to proc our Arcane Strike and the other for the Consequence. But yeah, they can proc something like the Fury one. So that's just an extra. Can. So now let's try it with Gloom. 
Now this time I'm not gonna have the enemy's AI pause just so you can kinda see it working. Let's simulate them. Let's leave them here. We'll just use our glaive to kill some enemies. Just so we can get our shadows. Of course that on a mission it would be a little bit different if they hit their shots they're actually gonna be healing themselves because we're getting we're giving them the life steal from gloom oh enemies are feared not even use the using the arcane here just to kind of show that they can heal themselves not gonna be that big heal, but they can do it little by little. So Gloom also works, but I still prefer to use the Blood Altar. And now let's go to the uh, other build, I'm gonna put this back here, which I call the Murder Ghost, which we are using Roar to, to increase, further increase our Shadow's damage. Let's see what we can do again. Kill as much stuff as we can. We got quite a few right now, by now. So let's go. Try to kill some to get your king going. Buff them. Look at that. You're doing decent damage. Game is still going. Decent amount of damage, even though these are 180 heavy gunners with a lot of health and armor. Uh, what else do I want to show you? Okay, you might think like now we're kind of on a bad place because now we don't have the heal from Blood Altar, Gloom, Full of Life, and stuff, but there is a melee that can heal our shadows which is the Sancti Magistar with its heavy attack of course now we're not having the glaive so this is kind of a uh, this is a quite a complicated trade I mean the, the glaive is not mandatory but I don't think the Sancti Magistar is as OP <laughs> or it cannot dish the same damage as the with the same efficiency as the glaive so yeah let's just see here I'm gonna fear everyone probably gonna die actually I'm kinda dumb sometimes I have this thing just increase the viral procs do some damage Now that, that we've killed a few of them, some of the dudes buff them. We're not at full, actually full stacks here. So we got this, and now let me show you the heal. Look at his health. Bam. Bam. Bring them a little closer would be good. Look at the health. Bam. Bam. Oh, everyone is dead. Oh, everyone is dead already. Kind of hard to show. <laughs> During missions, it's way easier. Let's 
see if we can get it now. It's definitely healing. I have used it in missions. Also, I haven't shown you the kit gun. This is a primary tomb finger. Omar is in splat. Built for viral and hunter munitions with some critical damage using hammer shots. Riven that is <laughs> not really good. And Sancti Magistar, I made a build, just a kind of dumb build for the heavy attack with killing blow, organ shatter, and stuff. Uh, not haven't put any big effort on making this build so you might be able to pull something much better the ribbon is totally trash after all that uh, for the glaive there is my glaive video but just for short this is the build I'm using uh, and Kuvanukur totally for the proc in the viral with Multi shots, fire rate, viral, and a ribbon. It's gonna give us punch through and yeah, some little bit of critical chance, but that should probably replace this for this build. I don't know, maybe just put a seeker. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think I've covered pretty much everything. The fantasy, the, the goals, how can we do it? So, to heal your allies either with skills or the Sancti Magistar. I have tried different stuff. I've tried using, yeah, I even have rejuvenation here because I was trying it. It won't make a difference on higher levels, on lower levels. Uh, it might just make if you get like a shadow with 300 HP you may be able to keep him forever by using rejuvenation I think that's how it works um, but yeah I've tried using other companions but I still think the Panzer Volpophila is one of the best I've also tried Kubros with the um, the set bonus for Mecha and was okay it was not super amazing uh, I've tried Sentinels also eh, okay uh, if you're not going for of course everything has to do with what you're doing but Usually people run the Smita Kavat for Steel Path and stuff to get more, to have a, ch a chance to get more Steel Essences. But the, the purpose of the build was to increase or to make our shadows to deal the most damage that we can. So to achieve that, the Panzer Volvophila is the best. But yeah. Uh, again, this is war from you. You'll just be using what you want and what you have. And yeah, increasing their damage is gonna be the Ethereum infection, which is, if you saw my previous video, is activated by the residual arcanes that you can equip on your kit guns. There is Shock, Boils, Milador, and Veremia, each one proccing different elements those elements will be added to I I don't think it's I, I'm not sure if it's added to your weapon but definitely it is added to your companions and stuff as we could see back there the electricity procs so you can even combine multiple or use multiple kit guns to get uh, combinations going I would say that the hardest thing on the build, the whole build, is to actually get the 
the kills after an hour or so on steel path if you're not going steel path you're probably not gonna have that much problem but as the armor and enemy scales it's gonna be really really hard to get those consistent kills with your uh, kit gun or at least mine it's not that good you might be able to make a better one and if you do make sure to leave it in the comments because not only people watching the video but also I would like to see that I would like to make a more powerful kit gun but by the time I record this video I haven't figured out a better one yet so yeah I think that's it you can go with whatever you want a little bit more uh, duration and efficiency here here we have adaptation give you much more survival here getting more damage because of the rhino roar I would probably change this and put the uh, the corrosive projection here so actually in some of the tests our dudes were not dealing as much damage as they could do oh one thing I have to mention is that there are there is another arcane that works arcane pulse does work uh, when you get a health pickup 60% chance of restoring 1500 health to allies within 25 minutes it does work but what is 500 HP to an ally that has over 40k HP it's like a fart on their health it's like a fart go, going up and then straight going down again this is not gonna make any difference it's not worth using this arcane uh, it could be worth if the cooldown wasn't so big um, if we could get this, it would probably be the best arcane for this, but we can't. Also, another arcane which could be, and I think it should work, is arcane bodyguard. Bodyguard. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And. Just imagine you're killing stuff again, 900 HP, it's not that much, but if you're killing stuff with your melee like a motherfucker, uh, you might be able to heal them, but it just doesn't work because they're, I think they're considered specters and not companions, so it doesn't work. Or at least I was not able to detect it. Uh, I think as far as arcanes goes, this is it. Yeah. I think we are done for the builds. These are my options, my suggestions, my tests. I have tested a lot of stuff to get here. And I've tried to record, to record this video probably more than 20 times because when you're speaking in another language sometimes your brain your brain connections are just off and you're talking and you forget something that you have to start over because the thing you were talking is important it needs to be there and it's if you just cut the video and it's good it is gonna be bad so yeah it was a lot of fucking time put into making this. So, help me out, leave that like, subscribe to the channel for more Warframe content. And also, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.